So, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome back for the next part of Avalon Le Fay, Lost Belt number 6, where we're about to do section 17, Manchester. So, without further ado, let's begin. Oh! What? Um... I, I don't think I'm getting a servant from this, though. Am I? I'm pretty sure I'm not getting a servant from this. And I don't have anything I can sell. Can I... S okay, I gotta check. Do I have, uh... Do I have room in my second archive? No, I do not. Alright, who's at the top of the level up order? Goey is at the top of the level up order. XP counts as servants. True, true, true. So, goey, 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 oh, goey. There she be. So, let's get goey leveling up. I don't like how odd number the foes I have are, though. I'm just going to throw 20 embers at goey for now. Because I do need to balance up my foe count. But Goey is now locked in as the next servant to be leveled up. So even if you put somebody with more to have more points above her, Goey is the current top contender. You're just pretty much competing for second place right now. Sorry to say. Okay, how many of the foes do I have each, though? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Um, I have 11 of this foe, and 6 of that foe, so I need to see if... Uh, unfilter the foes, show me the... Yep, I've got 3 stars showing. So take that, that puts me at... how many of that foe now? 15? No, still 11. 11 and 10. So I need 10 more of the foe looking up. So do I have a 10 spot of that foe? I have two fives. That works. So let's give Goey the foes here, if nothing else. And I'm not going to do... I'm not going to level her up completely today. Because I do want to get this section done before it gets too late. I'm just getting the foes out of the way so I know that she is locked in at the top contender spot. I need nine of the downward looking foes. So that means I need four. I don't have a four spot. That's annoying. Um, so I'm going to have one odd foe out here. Annoying, but we'll have to deal with it with it. Putting Lon Ling up there, okay. I will go ahead and move him. Oh, you're putting him down, too. Okay, interesting choice there. Alright, so Goey is now maximum foed, and she is leveled up to an odd number, so that will catch my eye, and Goey will be leveled up. Now, back into the Lost Belt, at long last. Anyways, Critzy, how be things, how be things? Uh, excuse me. I just had to find Lon Ling. Percival, we're back. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you're all safe and sound. Congratulations on another job well done, Artoria. Soul. I think everyone in Britain must have heard that Bella Pilgrimage ring. As your exclusive Knight Rider, I too couldn't be happier about this latest success. On a different subject, did you happen to pick me a souvenir? I don't know if you remember this, but it was no easy feat for us fairy horses to transport you 
all from Londinium to Gloucester in only half a day. Of course you remember, here's your two-in-one hair restorer and suntan oil. I found it at a shady looking hole in the wall. Indeed. It's just one of the many different magecraft trinkets being sold there now thanks to Artoria's previous escapade. Also, um, I don't think I, that I've said this while people were here, but I do think that Gareth is part of the Mirror Clan. There he is, Pretty Boy Swordsman. Lonling. Magecraft is becoming popular. Hair store for a horse. There is no need to hide it. I already know about a fashionable fairy who cares a great deal about his appearance. Be honest, aren't you itching to change your look now that Artori is doing the same? You're a great fairy, Oberon. A shady looking hole in the wall, you say? Sounds like the perfect place to me. <laughs> Alright, now that re Redra spirits have been lifted, let's say we head back to Londinium. Thank you, J6. Next on our list is Oxford's Bell. Once you ring that, this war will really kick into high gear. Actually, there's something else we should take care of. First, would you mind if we change venue so we could discuss our future plans a little bit more privately? Oh, that, huh? Okay then, why don't we try going to the woods over there, away from the highway? So this is only a five arrow note. Oh, hello, Moors. Damn, sorry about that. I had no idea this was actually a moor's nest. Please stand back, fairies. The Roundtable Army will handle this. No need to worry about us. The moors won't be able to so much as touch me. I'm Red Rabbit. The fairy seed of flame. See for yourselves how my body burns. Okay, I gotta admit, this looks aw he looks awesome in this ascension. Come, serviceable. Come, Lady Gareth. Let us demonstrate what the Knights of the Round Table truly aspire to. And Gareth is just done. <laughs> okay, it looks like we can pick anybody. Although we are set with those three, so we'll just bring along a support Castoria, have her in the back line, and go with this squad. Ooh, I just popped my elbow really good. My current coat is its finest, so he gets a quick boost. And this is only two waves. Okay, um, let's go for a quick chain with this. I do know that Percival's end is locked again, which makes sense considering it cuts his lifespan down. And Red Rabbit's also NP-less, I'm noticing. Weird. Um, da -dun -dun, da -dun 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 -dun. Gareth is about to be deleted. Poor Gareth. Unless I were to do... I don't know if their HP restoration would be enough, though. Oh, sorry, Gareth. And then we do... do, do, do it. Percival is the damage. Percival is the storm. Hey, Gareth survived. Lucky her. So, so she must be. Redra, you look awesome. But those are not good damage numbers. <laughs> and Percival, you're taking way too much damage here. Um, let's not die here, Percival, please. Oh, Okay, Percival's not looking too hot. 
Okay. Um. Well then. That wasn't expected. Yeah, that really was not expected. Night call. I still don't even know what the night calls are, honestly. I actually will need to bring in a proper crew here. At the very least, I need to bring in Muramasa and uh, somebody else. And this night call can put people to sleep. Lovely. There goes Percy. Okay, withdraw. Fall back. Fall back. Let's actually come in with a proper crew here. Skippity doo da, skippity day. We'll go with this Castoria and then. I'm gonna pull out the big guns here and bring in Squirtoria. In fact, can I? Sorry about this, you guys. Um, and then we want Proto. In fact. Because I kind of want to get this done, but before it gets too late, I'm gonna try hard this a little bit. And switch that to that. Yeah, this should be fine. Okay. We're gonna just do a little bit of try hard in here. <clears throat> For the snow. Oh, excuse me. While still staying within the bounds of my self imposed challenge. That's fine. Go ahead and curse Proto. Ooh, very good. That was from Proto. Get the little Put him on a quick card. Okay, not as much as I would have liked, but it will do. Go ahead and finish the journey to start. Up in Squirtoria. Percival, however, has a very, very solid turn line up for him, so. We're gonna do a Brave Chain off Percival first. And then we'll go Squirtoria. One cloaked in death removes the buffs, you bag us. Whoo, that annoys me very, very much. That's so annoying. Stripping me of my friggin' attack buffs. Nice. I'm glad I, at the very least, did not go in with my quick buffs. Now. Mm. Percival's asleep. 
but we now have a Scortoria more focused turn. Elected to be. Beggars can't be choosers. Stun. Power. Go. Good. And that's another NP, so we should have this in the bag. Oh, especially if they decide to give us two turns of Brave James for Squirtoria. He sure loves inflicting death resistance down for somebody that's not inflicted death once. <laughs> Okay. That wasn't too bad when I actually tried. A little bit harder. So as I was saying, I was actually thinking of ringing a different bell of pilgrimage next. We know where exactly where Oxford's bell is, and now that Woodwood is gone, we can ring it any time. So I propose we head to Orkney next. Morgan is about to be watching Oxford right now, which should mean Orkney is right for the picking. You see, that's a good point. We will have to make our way to Orkney eventually, after all. And since none of the Queen's troops have been deployed there, now it seems to be the best chance. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. The Queen will send her army after us the moment we head to Orkney, to say nothing of Nak Narabah's army in the north. Uh, so I think it would be safer to advance the Round Table army up near Camelot than have some troops protect us on the way to Orkney. No, if we go there as an army, Nock will mobilize her army in response. She's already gone on record saying she sees the Child of Prophecy as an obstacle, and Artoria as a rival. So if Artoria makes any overt move, she'll have no choice but to get in our way by virtue of her position as Queen. But we really don't want to fight the Northern Fairies unless we absolutely have to. We need them on our side fighting against Morgan instead. Right, Percival? Artoria? Right, we would like nothing more than to form an alliance with the Northern Fairies. Not all allies in the fight against the Queen, but as fellow citizens, Britain. We've tried sending messages to Nock several times, but unfortunately she won't even give us the time of day. I mean, Nock does hate humans. Actually, I wouldn't know if I say hate so much as... Well, never mind. That doesn't matter now. Anyway, I agree with Da Vinci. I think the fourth belt I rank should be Orkney's. Once I do that, we can stop by Nock's camp on the way home. She should be willing to negotiate with us now. Yeah, you have the Child of Prophecy in both name and deed now. The Chocolate Queen can't afford to avoid you of any ignoring you anymore. Okay, then the question is, how do we get to Orkney without anyone finding out? What if we went through the Lake District? It's marshland in northwestern Britain and constantly mired in fog. The terrain is much too treacherous for an army to cross, and it's full of moors, too. Both Knox Army and the Royal Army always keep their distance. It would be a much more dangerous route than taking the highway, but... Sounds like a good idea to me. Let's do it. We only got but so many people with us, we'd better be better off dodging moors than an army. I guess that's true. What do you think, Sol? You know, if it gets us there undetected, I'm all for it. I see. Then I guess that's that. Personally, I don't think splitting off our, from our army is a good idea, but I guess you guys are used to moving about as a small elite unit. For a team with your skills, the Lake District should be, shouldn't be much of a problem. Good luck. I'll be rooting for you. You're not coming with us, Oberon. Of course not. The Round Table Army is in the middle of a rapid growth period. Someone has to stay and keep an eye on them. Powering up the Child of Prophecy with the Bells of Pilgrimage is important, of course, but so is improving our army. First of all, I'd like you to come along and command the Round Table Army to you, so we can secure Oxford's Bell. I'll leave Londinium a little thinly guarded, but if we can occupy Oxford, we, gear I ar we arguably wouldn't need it anymore. And once that happens, the Queen's Army won't have any more reason to attack there. Then it's settled. Artoria, Sol, Marmasa, Da Vinci, Gareth, and Habitrot. We'll set out for Orkney's Bell, by the way of the Lake District. Red Rabbit, would you be willing to help them? 
I can certainly take them as far as the edge of the lake district, but I won't be able to bring the wagon in there. So once I've seen all of you off, I'll lay low in Edinburgh and pretend to be a wandering knight. You'll all be stopping by Edinburgh on your way back from Orkney, right? So I'll rendezvous with you there. That sounds perfect. Where have you been hiding all these smarts? For that matter, why were you toiling away as Aurora's secret riding horse all this time? You could have had a much more prestigious career under Woodrose. <laughs> as you can see, I've always had an affinity for the wind, so the Wind Clan feels like home to me. Redrabbit, faster than wind. Alright, then O'Brien and I will head back to Lindinium. Wait, I'm going with you too. I'm sorry, Artoria. I know this is selfish to me, especially if I had declared myself the Child of Prophecy's number one knight. I know my going back to Lindinium probably won't make that much difference. But I can still help there, and I just can't leave its people to fend for themselves. Of course, Gareth, you have nothing to apologize for. I think it's great that you found somewhere you belong. Don't worry about me. With Soul, Da Vinci, and Muramasa, I'll be just fine. Sure, I'll miss having you around, but it won't be long before we get to see each other again in Lundinium, so let's make sure we have both gotten stronger by then. You got it. In the meantime, I'll keep you keeping my ears peeled for the ring the next spell. I like their friendship. Good luck to you too, Oberon. Right, take care out there. Be warned, there's a ton of ash over there, that far shore, and it also gets really freezing cold out there. And since neither Blanca or I can cross the ocean, we have no idea what might be going on inside Orkney. Still, whatever you find there, I'm sure it won't be as bad as what we've had to overcome in the Russian Lost Belt. Oh, and keep an eye on Artoria. The more nonchalant she acts, the more she's te tearing up inside. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> Guess I didn't have bothered warning you, huh? I'm glad she's in good hands. Once we've rung the Orkney and Oxford Bells, I'll have to move faster than ever. So in the meantime, I'll do whatever is necessary to find out where the Sixth Bell is located. After that, I'll, it'll finally be time to face Morgan, regardless of how the odds are stacked against us. What's more, something tells me that even defeating her won't be enough to solve all of our problems. There's something else in Britain, something cursing every living creature here. Unfortunately, we haven't the least idea what it could be. Remember this soul. We still know almost nothing about Britain's history. If we were lucky, maybe you'll find a clue as to how this world came to be on its way in Orkney. And if we're really lucky, that clue may give us just the edge we need to defeat Morgan. Well, we need to find Mash, because Mash knows about Sir Nunnis, who is the source of all the curse at the very least, considering it nearly killed her. Alright, Manchester. Casters, huh? I hear a bell ringing. I hear a voice, my voice, called me in a dream that hasn't changed once in my entire life. This is everything we can do for her right now. We think it'll be at least some use. So please, make sure she gets it, okay? Okay, I will. I think the Child of Prophecy will be thrilled to receive this. Yeah, yeah, we think so too. You guys make sure you keep her safe, okay? Oh, those were the fairies she was talking about. I didn't really want to accept those gifts. It was all junk. An upper-class fairy who saw it would think it was just a pile of trash. But for those fairies who struggled just to make it through the day, it was their most precious treasure. I could see their hopes, their feelings in those gifts. I could see their future. I saw the hope they were clinging to. I saw the joy in believing someone in something warm. I saw them tear up from sheer gratitude being alive, no matter how hard life was for them. And I saw how they would probably be gone by the next morning. Oh. Next time we came to Glowchester, those fairies were nowhere to be seen. They didn't entrust their hopes to the Child of Prophecy because they knew they weren't long for this world. They would have loved to live longer, but they wanted to help the Child of Prophecy even more. So they gave me the only treasure they had. Their lives. Oh. Oh, I just got chills. I really wish they hadn't. Oh, Castoria. I see a Britain I don't recognize. 
in a world I know nothing about. I see a young squire sitting alone in a town lit only by the rays of the setting sun. It's me, as a little girl, the raised as a boy. The other Artoria is placing her hand on the Star's selection, even though no one told her to. Bryn's destruction is all but certain now. Anyone who would claim its throne is destined to be a sacrificial lamb. If you become its king, the people will place all their hopes on your shoulders, asking you to make everything right. If you fail, they'll just be as quick to curse you, blaming you for everything going wrong. You will gain nothing from this. Truthfully, you'll only be making life hard for yourself. A lone mage with a kind face stands behind her, encouraging her not to go through with this. You should think long and hard before you make your choice. Once you draw that sword, you'll never be able to go back to an ordinary human life. Yeah, think about it. No, there's nothing to think about. This just doesn't make sense. The world ending is everyone's problem to solve. If it's going to end, it should end with everyone cursing each other equally. So why? Why are you? I saw a great many people smiling. I don't think that was a mistake. Come on. And this is what happened as a result. Pariah to even her own knights and subjects, even after she rebuilt the entire country. Crushed beneath the weight of a world's hope, without ever knowing joy of her own. All she built came to ruin, and her trusted companions killed each other. Everyone she knew was dead, so she died alone. Such is the curse of King Arthur. So Castoria is, so the Bells of Pilgrimage are definitely causing a resonance effect. That's essentially confirmed at this point. This is some kind of joke. It's not funny. It's just cruel. Why could you just use her to get what you wanted and then ignore her forever? How would you forget her like she was just some story you'd finish enjoying? Why did she have to do all that? What did she feel like she had to? There was no reason at all for her to become a king. It just seemed like she had the power to. I don't understand. I've never, I've seen her whole life play out now. And it hardly sees, seems like something to aspire to. Why did it have to be you? Couldn't you just let someone else do it? The worst thing I could say slipped out of my mouth before I could stop myself. My other self quietly turned around to face me and said, Perhaps I do think there may have been someone else more suitable for this role. Then why? Why in the world did you do this? Why? I think you know the answer better than anyone. Hmm. Okay. Castoria's got a massive burden. We've been heading north on the highway all night, and it's almost noon now. At this pace, we should arrive at the entrance to the Lake District by, by nightfall. Just please remember that we'll be parting ways temporarily once we get there. Alright about that. I was actually hoping we could tweak our plans a little and you could head west from here. That's the way to Manchester, right? I want to stop by there before the Lake District. Manchester is in Vardis Domain. Are you sure about this, Soul? I suspected as much. You're a dog person too? What about you, Muramasa? What is it really that surprising? I just assumed you'd work that out when Da Vinci said you wanted to go to Orkney. Well, I didn't, okay. What about you, Have a Trap? Did you know? Me? Da Vinci talked to me about it before we got on the wagon. She wanted to know if I'd mind stopping there before Orkney. So you already knew about this, Have Cat? But I'm supposed to be the leader. I'm sorry, Artoria, but even if you are on board with this plan, I didn't think you'd be able to keep it to yourself. Vargas is still technically one of the Queen's family, so I didn't want Percival Oberon to know about this. Good point. Percival would certainly worry if he weren't, if he knew we were stopping by an enemy's territory, and I doubt Oberon would have been happy about it either, since she burned down his forest. Manchester's a nice place. It's very unlike Oxford, which has been getting more modernized with its restaurants. It's still an idyllic fairy town, like you'd see in a story. Fighting may be against the rules in Gloucester, but in Manchester, 
doesn't need to ban fighting. The whole, town, the whole town despises it, you see. Really? Even though the survival of the fittest law is, is the law of the land there? <laughs> Don't worry. Vargas' take on survival of the fittest isn't quite what you're thinking. What is it, then? You'll see when we get there. Alright, then. Manchester it is. Trust me, it's a lovely place full of peaceful wildlife. There won't be any fighting there whatsoever. I give you the red rabbit guarantee. Yeah, it's gonna be nothing but fighting. Manchester, Main Street. Inside a local tavern. Party goer fairy? Woo! Your tourists look really strong. This is awesome. Get up! <laughs> okay, I love that little encounter ding. That was hilarious. Okay, um, Castoria has gotten stronger. So one NP Sirspint is set. Looks like we are set with Red Rabbit. So we'll take the stronger Castoria here. She now officially is much stronger than my own. I mean, she's been much stronger than my own for a while now, but that's beside the point. And we'll go with Muramasa with this. And I'm going to see if I can get away with just this squad. Elated fair. Okay. Increases charge each turn. Lovely. Fun. Mm. Ooh, this is gonna get nasty real fast, I can already tell. Um There's no post going here, Artoria. And then do a brave team. Fun. That is for friends who do stuff together. You is for you and me. And is for anywhere and anytime at all. Here in the land of fairies. I'm good. Well, that shouldn't be surprising, I guess. What you doing? We want in. Oh! More. Of course there's more. Um. Well, it's a good thing we got a Muramasa Brave Chain here. Red Rock, can you help me out at all? No. Okay. Good to do. Oh, yeah. Well done, Maramasa. Well done, indeed. That wasn't bad at all. Okay, Manchester proper. Another battle, this time against a saber. We form our party immediately before the battle begins, and this is a formation restricted. Ooh, I wonder if we're gonna go up against Vargas here. Blood. Ugh. Uh oh. This doesn't sound good. It's the same dream I've had several times before. I'm crying. I'm crying while 
eating the rem remnant remains of what used to be my lover. They're delicious. I'm so happy. This is wonderful. It hurts. I'm heartbroken. This is madness. Predation is the fact of life for wild creatures. It's natural for us to seek out others, love them, and become one with them in order to survive. Living by the laws of the wild is also a source of pride for me. I'm blessed with an exceptional spirit origin, even for one of the Fang Clan. As one who is born strong, I have a duty to govern and protect the weak. I have to be strong. I have to eat the strong so I can grow stronger. You see, my rules are right. I only love the strong. And I eat those I love so that I may become an even better wild creature. That is my lot in life. That is how I had so many strong meals so I can defend Britain and protect the weak. But deep down, deep down. Having another good cry, Bargast? Why don't you come over here? You don't have to stop crying. Just tell me what happened today. Did something painful happen? Something sad? Did it happen to you while you smiled? Did it happen to you while someone else got upset? Whatever it is, please tell me. I want to know how you feel. It's okay. I promise I'll never stop liking you, no matter how embarrassing it may have been. His body seemed as though it could fall apart at any moment. He could barely speak above a whisper. He was the weakest creature I've ever known, and he helped me tremendously when I was on the verge of a breakdown. You know, there's nothing like a fun story to cheer you up in hard times. Why don't I tell you another tale of your favorite Knights of the Round Table? I'll tell you a story of Flotsam that drifted here as a changeling. A florid... Story of a Flotsam that drifted here as a changeling. A florid, proud, and slightly somber story. A story of the brave knights you've always looked up to. The knights of those stories were not compelled by anyone to be righteous. They were born righteous. They were proud. They, wonder they were wonderful. They protected the weak and did good deeds wherever they went. They may have only stories from another world, but I still admired them more than anything. Even though a despicable fairy like myself had no right to do so. Whatever it, whenever I shared my traditions through my tears, he always responded with a gentle smile. There, look out at the garden. Those flowers you planted have grown in beautifully. And I see you planted another one for me today, so that I could enjoy them even though I can't walk. Thank you. That's so kind of you. I only hope that one day you'll be free of the pain you carry in your heart. So Vargas doesn't like her nature. That's right. Her love runs true and deep. With every new relationship, she's certain she can prevail over her need to consume. She's never succeeded. Now she's at her limit. No, she reached her limit long ago. I don't know how many times she thought of putting herself out of her misery. But despite that urge, her strong sense of responsibility forbids her from taking the easy way out. So she lives with the guilt of devouring her lovers, and as penance continues to protect Britain as the Inuvit tears her up inside. She's an example of, to all of us. That's why I want to help her any way I can. You're the only possess fairy possessed of true nobility. It would be a tragic loss for you to take your own life. So let's make a deal, Bargast. It's still a little too soon for you to take on the curse, after all. Take on the curse. What curse? Sorry, so sorry. I really am sorry about that, everyone. I hope you can forgive them. Well, I promise I'll give these idiots a stern talking to later, so this sort of thing doesn't happen again. They're very susceptible, susceptible to trends, you see, and well... You know how they're talking about Camelot preparing for war these days, right? That made them want to have a pretend war of their own. They were satisfied with war games up until you walked in, but... Well, come on, those fairies and the human just look so strong, I knew they'd be a blast to fight them. Don't be daft, have you forgotten that Lady Vargas is right? It's back right now? If you lots ever get some killed and she finds out about it, she'll have your heads and mine. You ought to be thankful, thanking your lucky stars that these people are so strong and understanding. Also, no more alcohol for you until I say so. Aw, oh, come on, don't be like that. I can't go back to not drinking human alcohol now that I know how good it is. Well, Red Rabbit, care to revise your Red Rabbit guarantee? That's strange. I distinctly remember Manchester as a town bursting with smiles, kindness, and violence. Don't be silly, there's no violence here. The rule of Manchester is survival of the fittest. She looks... She does act... That is actually interesting. She does look like the fairies from Wales. I'm Jenny. I was just born here recently. I see. That explains it. So you must not know much about Manchester yet. Do you happen to know where the Lord's house is, Jenny? So... I wonder... The fairies in the Welsh woods died. Fairies are reborn... 
in time, so did all the fairies from the Welsh woods get reborn, perhaps? You mean Lady Vargas? Sure, it's over that way, at the end of the big road. Oh yeah, I see it now. Looks like it's a big mansion with a beautiful garden. Anyway, I thought Manchester was a Fang Clan town, but I guess it has fairies like you too. Are those Earth Clan fairies here as well? Hmm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen many Earth fairies. There's a lot of humans here, though. It's about half fairies, half humans. Really? So far, I've only seen fairies walking around. Are there really that many humans here, too? Of course, it's survival of the fittest here, so the strong have to protect the weak. I know, because I'm one of the ones being protected. Lady Vargas might be strict, but she's also really kind and really funny. So that's how she defines survival of the fittest, huh? Now I get it. I had my suspicions, given what we've seen of her. But it does look like to Vargas, survival of the fittest ain't about the strong preying on the weak. That's right, she's been like this for as long as I can remember. The strong should only eat the strong. The weak aren't worth eating, so they must be protected. She'd say that all the time. Seems like we attempt to ask about this. That is actually an excellent question. Like, why does she know all this? Uh, of course not. Don't be silly. I mean, you saw how Vargas didn't even recognize me, right? Nope, certainly haven't known her in a long while. No, sir. And she does keep calling her Baggy as well. In fact, I didn't even know a single thing about her. Nothing. Huh? I know about Lady Vargas. She's back at her mansion right now. Everyone in town keeps congratulating her over coming back to visit her new lover all the time. Are you kidding me? All her talk about being a proud noble Tamlin and she still had the time to keep lovers? Vargas lover. I don't even want to think about it. You can't take what rumors say too seriously. It's not like she ever confirmed any of them herself. And even if what they say is true, that's between her and her lovers, right? It's They're okay with it. Who are we to judge? Well, true love or not, crimes are crimes, but this is also the land of the Fae, and we know different areas have their very own different laws. Still, now that we've come this far, we can't leave without seeing her. If you're scared, Red Rabbit, it's okay. You can wait here. Besides, we're the ones who wanted to talk to her. No, that's okay. I've come this far with you, and I'm not about to part ways now. Besides, I can't help it if she sits her sights on me as her next dish. That's just the burden of someone as popular of all ages as me has to bear. So things should take a turn for the worse. I can at least be bait. I mean a meat shield for the rest of you while you make your escape. Now come, let us be off to the demon's lair. I'm certainly not afraid of any horrific fairy-eating black dog. Welcome to Manchester, everyone. What a wonderful surprise to see you take me up with my request less than a day after I made it. Gorgeous. Who in the world would call such a beautiful lady horrific? I see now that you are nothing less than a true noble. Hmm, a true champion. Personally, I, Red Rabbit, feel as though I've just been hung out to dry in the final corner. Thank you for your kind words. Um, may I ask who this Fang Clan fairy is? Don't worry about him. He's just another hapless horse. Happy Cat, would you mind taking Retro outside for a bit? Sure thing. Come on, Red Rabbit. Uh, let's go to the yard. I noticed there was a fun-looking plaza out there. It's called the Paddock Habitrot. Ah, uh, there really is nothing like a clan mansion. They have always have lu many luxuries, even when the owner has no particular plans to use them. And he's already forgotten. Thank you for the warm welcome. Of course, it is the incumbent upon every good lord to show their guests proper hospitality. All the more so when I was in the one who invited you to begin with. If anything, I should be thanking you. Anyway, I'm glad you let us here without even patting us down. Now that we know for sure you don't mean to fight us, we can relax and get down to, um, Vargas. I'm afraid you are mistaken in that. While I certainly bear you no ill will, as you can see, I do have every intention of fighting you. Hmm? What's the meaning of this, Vargas? Would you kindly stay out of this? My business is, is my business is with you. Sol, Master of Caldean, Leonardo da Vinci, his faithful servant. I know this is unbecoming, but I would like to ask you with all respect for a duel. Would you be so kind as to show me your strength once again? She wants to see for herself how strong Caldea is. I see. You want to find out if Caldea can walk the walk before we talk the talk, huh? I gather you won't trust us unless we can prove we're able to beat you without the Child of Prophecy's help. That is true, yes, but more than that, I'm interested in you, Sol. I want to see if just how far you, a mere human can go against fairies. No. I'm going to see for myself whether your victories so far have been more than a fluke. Okay, so... 
we have Da Vinci. We are restricted to three servants. I'm gonna go all in with Squirtoria here. This slot, though... Hmm. Who to use? Under my restrictions, who can I even use? I could bring Proto in. Let's see how this goes. I have no support here. Powers. Lowly Lot. I don't really have an issue with saying Lowly Lot, it's just... I'm not you used to saying it yet, is the thing. Squirtoria has been in the game much longer. Okay, her damage is significantly lower. Like, that is a significant decrease in damage there. Um... Hmm... How, many, how long is that strong gears out for two more turns? Keep Go like this. Yeah. It just occurred to me that if I don't take her down before her end, I am. She is. And she will delete me. Yeah, I need to start putting on the pressure. That NP will be me. I'm gonna have to scout a bar every turn. That's gonna be damn near impossible, though. One bar. Dog. Oh, really? Oh, really? The O oh really was more to the fact that she just NP'd me. annoyed me so much. Mm. I need to be able to stun her. Mm, this is gonna be a pain. I have no idea how I'm going to deal with this. Like, literally no- next to no idea here.
Mainly out of these restrictions, it's difficult to deal with this, I guess. That's a better way to put it. It's a three turn damage cut three times. Um. I really would appreciate getting NP here, Squirtoria. Thank you. Okay. Sadly, I don't have a Squirtoria Brave Chain here, but... Stun. Back and wait. Save Proto skill. Go. Do it. Do it. Mother trucker. I'm dead. I'm dead. Maybe Da Vinci will hold on. That's the only thing I can think of is Da Vinci being able to hold on. Heal up you and get the stars early. I completely forgot Scratoria during NP as well. That's my bad. Okay. This is better. This is gonna hit as hard as I would like, but it's gonna be as hard as we can get. And it's still pretty decent. We might actually manage to get through this bar. Which is just going to be another issue, but... We'll take it when we get it. gracious that was the end i would not have been able to take her down i was dead to rights but i was ready to use a blue square there if i needed to to take down the last bar that's why i kept going when i saw that she didn't kill da vinci because i knew if i could at least break that bar then i could go into a np chain for the final bar and go from there Sounds like we're eating. One minute, one minute we're fighting, the next we're enjoying a veritable feast. All oh, these Noshi are so good. I love how versatile potatoes are, no matter where, what world they come from. These oysters are amazing, too. I was a little shocked when they came out on that huge plate piled up to the ceiling, but damn if I can eat these things forever. Don't the fancy presentation fool you. It's not nearly as impressive as it looks. 
Just look at all these meat pies dominating the table. There must be enough here to cover Gareth's entire shield. It makes pretty clear how vain Bag he is. She's obviously trying to break our concentration by overwhelming us with quantity and flourishes. Won't work on me, though. So you're not even aware you're taking bites of the pie as you speak. Um, okay, that was weird. It was taking you time to click to go through. Oh man, this is really good. There, I changed back to my usual armor now that I'm done with both fighting and cooking. I do hope you like the food. I apologize that I couldn't make anything more than these simple dishes. Normally I would have had my chefs do the cooking, but I had to give them a leave of absence as part of my house arrest. So unlike Gawain, who can literally only make mashed potatoes, Vargas can actually cook. That's hilarious. You made all this yourself, huh? That's right, but it's nothing too impressive. I merely imitated flower-based human culinary techniques and drilled them into me. It's a far cry from the gourmet cuisine they serve in Camelot. Is that so? I didn't think you, Tamlin, were so domestic. It must be hard being the lord of a hick town like this if you have to do your own cooking. Hmm? I don't understand. Shouldn't everyone who plans to get married someday be able to do all manner of housework? Ooh! The burned Castoria! Oh no. <clears throat> yeah, everything was great, but we should get down to business, I think. Indeed. Now that we've come this far, I will be completely frank with you. I want to keep the residents of Britain safe. That is why I pledge my horn to Her Majesty. But Her Majesty does not share that goal. In fact, she is actively working to worsen the Great Calamity. She cares only for Fairy Britain itself, not the Fae who inhabit it. So here's my proposal to you, Channel Prophecy. If you mean to ring the bells of pilgrimage so that you may truly save Britain, I'm willing to fight for your cause. If need be, I will even raise up against the Queen herself during the Battle of Camelot that is now sure to come. You're serious about this, aren't you? I don't mind having you on board, but what about your pride as a knight? You really want to join our side even after you destroy the human ranch and burn down the Welsh forest at the Queen's command? That's right. Even if it is too little, too late. I still wish to join you. As to my crimes, you are welcome to convene a court-martial after the Battle of Camelot. Rest assured that I will expect no mercy. I will accept whatever punishment fits my crimes. But first, I want you to promise me one thing. Sol, Da Vinci, you have both said it is possible for a fairy Britain's residents to immigrate to proper human history. If that is true, and you two are willing to tolerate fairies living among you, then I would ask you please give the matter some thought. Her Majesty has already told me that our Britain is what is known as a Lost Belt, a world that was meant to disappear to make way for the proper human history. I believe it. I have no doubts that this Britain should have never come to exist. What makes you say that, Bargast? You want to protect Britain, right? So why do you think it should never have existed? Aren't those two ideas mutually exclusive? Because we fear this land. Every one of us. I suspect you could ask any fairy in the land, and they would give you the same answer. At any rate, under Queen Morgan's reign, every fairy will perish by the end of the year. I naturally have no notion of what our lives would be like under the Child of Prophecy's reign. But if there should be fairies who, under her reign, wish to move outside the world, I hope you will take them in. If worse comes to worse, then this Britain really does disappear. I could ask for nothing more than to have the fairies born here live on in your world. Well, technical advisor. I think it's a great idea. In fact, I can't come up with a single reason to refuse. The storm border is big enough to hold up to 500 refugees. They don't have to live there until we resolve the bleached earth phenomenon, of course. But as long as they're okay with that, they should be able to get by on the border just fine. Besides, this is exactly what the storm border was designed for. It's a modern day Noah's Ark. While there aren't many of them, there have been a few vessels like that in proper human history. They served as literal lifeboats to preserve the future of the species they carried. The Thunder ain't a whole lot compared to the fairy population at large, though. You're gonna be okay with that, Bargus. Yeah, saving even a small number is far better than failing to save anyone. As long as you remember this promise, you know my wish, then it will be gladly become a filthy turncoat for your cause. Of course, I'm sure Sir Gawain would think poorly of me for this. However briefly I used his name, I admit the very idea of betraying one's own lord must be unthinkable to him. He would have some choice words, but he would also be proud. Gawain, you very much live up to Gawain's name at points of artist. I see, so he really would scold me. But I have to ask, are you sure about this, Bargast? Never mind the politics, are you sure you can trust us with your enemies? I'm sure. You said something like this yourself by, before yourself, Sol. Even if the world is about to disappear, you didn't want what might come tomorrow ruined today. 
And you are exactly right. Instead of worrying what might happen tomorrow, I should focus on what I can do today. That resonates with Castoria, doesn't it? Alright, I can't possibly turn you down at this point. Forgetting for a moment how in the world I'm going to explain this to Oberon. Tail and Bargast, if you really want to help a child of prophecy, you can do so in Camelot. Once the fighting there begins, you're to refrain from attacking the Round Table army. That is, that part is absolutely non-negotiable. Aside from that, well, if you feel like neutralizing some of the Queen's army for us, I'm not going to stop you. Anyway, those are my only instructions. Any thoughts, Bargast? I'm surprised you didn't ask me to open the castle's gates from the inside for you. Did I not say you need not hold back on my behalf? I know, but I just don't trust you enough to rely on you for something so crucial. All you have to do is fight with your means. We can break down the gates ourselves. Good point. If you were lying, you would certainly be in dire straits if you trusted me to open the gates for you. You made the right choice, but I must admit, I didn't expect you to be so severe. I don't think it's going to come down to that. On a much lighter subject, though. Yes, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Yes, can you introduce us to your significant other? <laughs> yes, I'd love to meet them, too. We've heard all about it in town. They say you come back to Manchester all the time just so you can spend time with your new squeeze. It's not all the time, I just come here as often as I can. Besides, he's not my significant other at all. He's just a human boy I take care of. I only love the strong. I would never even dream of taking a lover as weak and keep one devoid of a future as him. You sure about that? They say love is blind for a reason. You could just as well end up falling up in love with the last person you'd suspect. I could. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that proper human history's culture is so advanced. But, um, I digress. Adonis is very weak. <laughs> Adonis! He's been secretly his, all his life. He's currently recuperating here in my mansion. While he was very excited to meet you when I told him about you, Soul, I'm afraid he's been struggling with an unrelenting coughing fit lately. And I haven't been able to get him to the medicine he needs thanks to the intermittent great calamity. So why don't I at least let him get all the rest he needs? That said, I would be very grateful if you could come here to meet him after the battle at Camelot. I may not be able to come back myself, but I know you would all get along very well. Gotcha. Sorry for the uncouth request. I guess fairies aren't the only people you want to keep safe. Of course not. You may not hesitate to discipline uneducated humans, but that is no more than what the basic training humans need to survive in this world. Fairies and humans are two halves of one whole. You cannot treat them separately. Protecting fairies means doing the same for humans. Well, this has been a really productive talk. I'm glad we stopped by Manchester. I think this has been a good respite for you too, Artoria. You must have enjoyed getting to talk with, another, with an old fairy friend of yours, right? Sure, you might have been acting all huffy, but you clearly also enjoyed the meat pies, seeing as how you ate so many. Or spite, Harley, this wore me out even more than acting the part of the Child of Prophecy around the Round Table Army. Now, if we're done here, let's get going already. We still have to make it to the Lake District by nightfall. The Lake District? I see, sir, so going to Orkney. There may not be very many moors up north, but each individual moor there is stronger than what you are accustomed to. And those in the Lake District are especially strong at that. Be careful out there. Thanks for the heads up. Bargast. What is it, Bargast? Still got something on your mind? Yes. I was just thinking about the relationship between master and servant you told me about during your meal. Her Majesty has told me about servants as well. Servants are spirit beings that are retrieved from the Chronicle of Human History, a place beyond time known as the Throne of Heroes. They also they come into being when their master summons them for a particular purpose. These servants then stay behind their master's side, and should their master die, they vanish. Do I have all that correct? Pretty much, yep. Why? Then it doesn't make sense. What? The servant obey a master when the master's weaker? I've wondered about that too, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Beryl Gut. He claims that Queen Morgan is a servant he summoned himself. But Queen Morgan has never called Beryl Gut her master. And above all, he only came to Fairy Britain a few months ago when Morgan had been queen for over 2,000 years. That's what doesn't make sense. Her Majesty was alive well and long before this man came along. Unless, is it possible to summon a servant version of a currently living person? You know, that is a good question. Why does he keep saying that? I can think of one possibility. There have been a few cases where the future forms of heroic spirits with exceptionally complex histories have been summoned in the present day while their original selves still were alive. And since in proper human history, Morgan was known to have three separate personalities, it could be that one of them was summoned here. But of course, if that were the case, it would also mean that there are two Morgans here in Fairy Britain. I don't suppose you've seen any signs of a second Morgan, or even heard rumors of that effect? No, I haven't. There's only one Queen Morgan, and she is not a servant. 
I've served Her Majesty for 200 years. I'm absolutely certain she is a fairy. That's why I wish to ask you about this. Is this barrel gut truly Morgan's master? That is an excellent question. Considering we know out of character that he told Tristan that he hasn't summoned, or Balban Sith that he hasn't summoned his, I don't think so. Anyways, this is the final note of section 17, and then we will be calling tonight's stream. Is this going to be another... Yep. Okay, maybe not. This is something else. Circumstantial change confirmed. I have a proposal for you, chosen ones. An offer up for those who were cast aside. If you desire acclamation, then choose your birth. If you desire indolence, then choose eternal sleep. It makes no difference to a god. It makes no difference? Well, it sure as shit makes a difference to me whether I live or die. Living inevitably means struggling, while dying takes those struggles right off your plate. I've always preferred to keep things simple. I can't even dance if I've got too much on my mind. I claim power, the future of humanity. Being the very best version of myself, I can. Fact is, I don't care enough about myself to get worked up about any of that. Okay, Mr. Foreign God, I hear you, but before I get you my answer, can you tell me one thing first? Okay. So we're... Okay, good. So this is the Foreign God. So... This is after Wudame managed to, um... Do what he did to get the rest of the cryptors a chance. Uh, sorry, when I struggle for if the symbol can't dance too much for clan power for you, Manny. Best version of myself. Fact is, I don't care enough about myself to get worked up about all that. Before I give you an answer, can you tell me one thing first? I asked him if there was anything in this world that actually mattered to me. And he answered me without a second thought. Guess that's a god for you. Hmm. So Beryl does have something that matters to him then. Hey, Kerstaria. So you made it back to life too, huh? Well, hey, that's awesome. I thought I'd be the first one out, but I guess I was dead wrong. I mean, we're talking about a foreign god here, right? One who says he's gonna refute all of human history. Interesting that they're in the bleached earth, though. How is that possible? I figured the only ones who'd jump on a sweet offer like that'd be me, Pepper, and Chino, or David. Not at all, I have as much desire as the next person. What could be more enticing than the prospect of creating a new human history? You'd have to be mad to refuse. Well, damn, I stand corrected. So you're finally showing your true colors, huh, Wudame? I mean, there's been times before when I couldn't believe the stuff that came out of your mouth, but still. Anyway, you've got a real nice smile now. It's li I like it. It's a big relief. That smile says I'm gonna abandon all of humanity to their deaths so I can be the king of the goddamn world. If you were all broken up about this while pretending to be one of the good guys, then I have some serious reservations about sticking with you. Hmm? Do I really seem that different now than I did before? Nope, you don't. That's why I'm so happy about this. You've actually been off your rocker this whole time. Oh well, at least I already knew on some level that the members of Team Amos understood me in many ways. Hmm? Hey, don't get all gloomy on me. I like this new you. So what do you want me to do, Wudame? You're the team leader, yeah? And hey, now that I finally get the whole Crypto thing was about... The whole Crypto thing was about... That's right, you were brought into the Singularity Repair Mission for emergency contingencies, weren't you? You know about our secret Sirius lights and how to use them. You also know how they're designated to deliver the decisive blow to ensure the preservation of humanity. When the foreseen singularities appear in the seven points in human history, we expect them to. Hmm. I thought only me and Mirrors were you know about the Sirius lights. Guess you did too, huh? Or maybe the foreign god told you. Either way, you were sure cut my work out for me. Well, you guessed it. I'm the cleanup guy. It's my job to dispose of anyone thinking about deserting their post. So what are you going to do with me now? Going to kill me here while we're all alone and not wreck team morale? No, I think your root business could be useful. I want to use it. Eventually, everyone from Team A will be resurrected and assigned a Lost Belt. From there, the Foreign God will give us each a ticket to potentially becoming the King of the World in exchange for growing our Lost Belt stream of Didas. And I would like you to tear your ticket up. You don't mind, right? It's not as though that ticket will actually be good for anything. However, you can't be reckless about it. You need to do so in secret. It'll make it seem as though you're still giving it an honest try. Hmm? Hang on, you're telling me to betray the Foreign God, too? And what was that about tearing up my chance to become the king of the world? Are you shitting me with... You'll be assigned the Isle of Britain. I took the liberty of choosing it for you. I assume you don't mind it being your homeland. And if I do, not even Marysbury was this unilateral with his decision-making, you know? I see. Unfortunately, now that I've already brought this up, I can't pretend it never happened. If you refuse, I'm afraid I'll have no choice but to kill you. 
What, seriously? So I've got no choice in this. Thank you, Beryl. I'm glad we understand one another. You're the only one I can ask to do this. I don't know what that Lost Belt is like, but you knew Burton is crucial to the Magecraft world. There is no telling what could happen if the foreign god were to inhabit something which came from there. It's the one Lost Belt that must be cut down before it can grow to maturity. How you choose to go about it is your own business, but... Basically, you just want me to slack off like I've always done, right? Okay, pal. You got it. Okay, this is some very interesting exposition here. Besides, I never had much interest in competing to become king of the world anyway. The gig's w this gig's way at more way more up my alley. That said, Wodame, this is a deal we're making, so I expect you to keep your end of it too. Once you become the king of the world, you'd better make damn sure I live up to the lap of luxury. Alright. Hmm. So then Beryl killed Wodame because Wodame wasn't planning to do anything. Shit, there really isn't a goddamn thing here, is there? That doesn't make sense. Well, apart from all the phantasmals and fairies and assorted nasty beasties running around, how's a place like, place like this going to be any threat to new human history? I guess even Woodman gets it wrong every now and... No, wait, I remember that look on his face. Whatever is here, he was positive it was going to be a problem. Maybe he knew about something funky going down in London the rest of us didn't. Oh well, no sweat off my back. That just makes my job even easier. Now I can take care of the tree of emptiness without anyone getting in my way. Speaking of which, I should probably go about summoning my servant. Thanks for making sure each crafter could summon at least one servant, Marysbury. I mean, it was the least you could do after inscribing us with something as dangerous as the Sirius Lights, but still. The Sirius Lights are dangerous. Of course, I still don't know exactly what kind of servant I'm going to get. But I think I can make a pretty good guess. Whoever I summon, my only condition is that they're capable of destroying the world. So he did summon somebody. He summoned Morgan. I'm Morgan, the Fairy Queen, a ruler. I've come in response to your summons. You there, descendant of witches, are you my master? She's a ruler, but she's a berserker. Hmm. Ah, oh, that was a good nap. I knew I made the right choice stopping here before heading home to Darlington. Oops, sorry, Queenie. Didn't realize you were so hard at work on the throne all by your lonesome. Still, don't you think it's time you chilled out just a bit, Morgan? A tree of emptiness dead. Kershtar was our biggest enemy, and we defeated him too. The foreign god never got a hold of the spirit origin she wanted, and she never will now. There is nothing for us to be afraid of. We practically already won. So why not just relax? It's not like Chal Chaldea or the Child of Prophecy are any threat to you, right? Of course not. I never considered either of them to be my enemy. My only enemies are the humans who once rejected me, and the Isle of Britain that would reject the fairy Britain I created. Proper human history itself is my enemy, and so I will not relinquish my throne until it has been truly, utterly destroyed. Know this, Barrelcut. The fault for Balbon Sith's failure in Gloucester lies in part with you. If you are so inept as to be unable to babysit a child, I'll be forced to reconsider your position both as my husband and master. Tell Balbon Sith that she has her, she's had her final chance. I have been, I've clearly been too soft on her, and it's time she learned to carry herself in a, manner, in a manner befitting my heir. Whatever you say, Morgan. Should be a lot happier to hear that from you, but I guess it's too much to ask. You don't really love anyone, so there's no chance you'd allow an heir to take over for you. Man, I almost feel sorry for Balbun being adopted by a woman as cold-hearted as you. Well, that w that ruler Morgan did have a different look than the Lost Belt Morgan that we've seen. And the first Ascension for Morgan looks different than that silhouette did. So it could be the final Ascension, but I'm guessing there's more to that story. Because that Fairy Britain, as Barrow said, was empty. When it's very clearly not, and it has a very long history. So something's up here. Anyways, quest, keep, quest clear, get reward. We get the quartz, two scales, two prisms, and two hellfires. And then we will be back with MASH tomorrow. Because I've been going for almost an hour past my intended time. So I'm going to call this stream of fate grand order here. Tomorrow, earlier in the day, we will be continuing with Avalon Le Fay. I have no idea how many sections are left. And I don't want to know. But currently, I do think that's... By Friday, I will probably be rolling on this banner here. Make sure, yep, on this banner here, mainly to get Percy, because Percy is cool. But, um, 
yeah, that's going to be all for me for now. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave me a feedback in whichever way you so see fit. If you're here on Twitch, be sure to drop me a follow. If you're here on YouTube, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you can catch more Fate Grand Order content. But thank you all once again so much for coming out. I hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. That is unfortunate, J6. That really is unfortunate. Did it just... I hope it didn't just die. But hopefully we can talk more tomorrow. Bye-bye.